Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to continue working on Space Invaders in Pygame. I'll run the code from last time to show how far I'd gotten. So I've got my game window with my background and I have a spaceship that I can move left and right and I have some additional checks to make sure that it doesn't go off the screen. And lastly, I have a health bar. So what I'm going to focus on in this video is adding bullets that the spaceship can shoot. And I will do that in the same way as I've created this class. I will create a bullet class using Pygame's sprite class as the super. So if I come down here, I can pretty much just copy that uh, down below and just change some of the wording. So this is now going to say create bullets class. And actually I'll capitalize that. So class bullets, it will inherit from Pygame sprite dot sprite class. Initialize in the same way, but all I need to supply is an X and a Y coordinate. So then I have uh, the init function from the parent class, which is Pygame sprite class. And then I have to do the same checks to start with. So I've got my image variable created. Uh, I just need to change the path for it from spaceship to bullet. And then I create a rectangle from that image. And lastly, I set the center point of that rectangle to X and Y, which I'll be supplying in here. So I can delete these last two because they were specific to the spaceship. So with the init defined, I can now define an update function. So let's come in here and say define update. And the update for the bullets is going to be very straightforward. All that I want the bullets to do once they've been created is just to move up the screen. So I can adjust the Y coordinate of the bullet rectangle and just reduce it by five at each iteration. So it's just going to move by five pixels up the screen at every game loop. And now with the instance created, I can come in here where I've got my groups and add a second group. So this is going to be the bullet group and I will call the same code pygame.sprite.group. So if I go back into the main code here where I've got my draw sprite groups, I can now copy the spaceship one and add in below bullet. So I just want to draw my bullet groups and in here, I will add a separate section for updating my sprite groups. So the spaceship is not being updated as a group. I will explain that later on. Uh, the rest of them will be updated as groups. So bullet group dot update. OK, so let's run this code and it runs OK. There's no issues there and I can keep moving this uh, spaceship around the screen. So to actually generate these bullets, at the moment, I don't have any code for creating instances of this class. And I want that to happen when I press the spacebar. So that's part of the spaceship controls. That means that I can do it within the update function of the spaceship class. I'm already looking for key presses here when I look for the left and right arrow keys, which means that I can just add in an extra check for shooting. So I'll add a comment here, and then I can copy this code down so now if key uh, and the key that I'm looking for is space, if that is true, then I just need to create um, a bullet instance. And that's easy enough. I'll just say bullet equals bullets, which is the class. And if you remember, it took two variables or two arguments, which are the X and the Y coordinate. I want the bullet to start on the same X coordinate or rather in the middle of the spaceship. So that's going to be self.rect.centerx. And I want it to be on top of the spaceship. So I don't want the bullet to actually originate from the middle in the Y coordinate. I want it to be in front of the spaceship. So self.rect.top. Once I've created an instance, I need to add it to my bullet group. And that's done with bullet underscore group dot add. And then I put in the name of that instance that I have just created. So every time I press space, it's going to create a new bullet. It's going to put it at these coordinates and then it will add it to the group. And because I've added the extra code into the main loop for updating and drawing this group, each bullet will automatically go through its own update loop. So each one of them is going to move up the screen. Now, there is going to be an issue with this code and you may have spotted it already, but I will run it just to show what happens. So if I press space, you can see I shoot out the bullets and that's fine. But if I hold space, I just create an endless stream of bullets. There's no, uh, there's no check on how many I can make. They just keep getting created. So obviously that is not ideal. 
there are a number of different ways that you can control this. You could add a counter, for example, that increases by one every uh, iteration of the game loop. And when a counter exceeds a certain value, then you reset the counter and you create a new bullet. And that is fine, but I think a better method for this would be to use time. So before I start uh, a bullet generation, I want to note what time it is at the moment. So I'll just say record current time. So this will be a variable called time now, and I'll set it equal to pygame.time.get underscore ticks. And what I want to do now is essentially check how much time has passed since the last time a bullet has been shot. So before I do that, I need to define a new variable up here in the self or the init section. And this is going to be my last shot variable. So self dot last shot. And it's going to start off as pygame.time.getTicks. So this is going to measure when the bullet was initiated, essentially, when it was created. So if I come back into my uh, spacebar code here, all I need to add is an additional check. So and time now, which I've just taken with this variable, uh, minus self.lastShot. And I want to check whether that is above a certain value. So has enough time passed since the last shot was measured? Has enough time since then passed? And that's going to be a new variable, which I'll just call cooldown. So it means I can adjust it easier and, and try and get a good suitable time. So I'll come back up here and I will say set a cooldown variable. And I'll set cooldown to 500. And this is in milliseconds. So I'll just add a comment to explain that. So basically, what I'm saying is if half a second has passed between the last time a bullet was shot and the current time, then that means uh, I can fire another bullet. So let's try this code out. And I seem to have forgotten something. What have I missed? Oh, of course. So the, the last thing I want to do, if this is the case, then I can shoot a bullet, but I need to update the last shot variable because I have now just shot a new bullet. So I'll just add an extra line right at the end, self dot last shot is equal to the current time because I've just shot a new bullet. So my last shot is right now. So that effectively restarts the timer for the cooldown. So I'll try that again, hold spacebar, and there you go. I'm holding it down and I'm just shooting a bullet every half a second. And I can tweak that as much as I want. I can make this faster, make it 100, and I'm shooting them way faster than before, but that's probably too much. So 500 seems like a, a good value to stick with. The problem, however, and it's not in immediately visible, is that once these goes off the top of the screen, nothing actually happens to the bullets. They stay within the group. So if the game goes on long enough, you're just going to fill up your group with a ton of these bullets that have long gone off the side of the, uh, the top of the screen and they're still being updated and they're still moving up. So I don't want that. I want these bullets to be deleted once they go off the end of the screen. That means I can come into this bullet class and where I have my update, I just need to add a little bit of extra code for that. Uh, and that code is just going to be a simple check if self.rect.bottom, so if the bottom of the bullet has gone off the screen, therefore the, co the y coordinate is less than zero, then self.kill. And that just kills the particular instance. So because I'm creating loads of instances and adding them to the group, this is an easy way of just deleting that one bullet. So the rest will stay where they are. Now it's not going to be visible whether this is working or not, because when it goes off the end of the screen, you can't see them anyway. So to test this, let's set a value of 200 and let's see if the bullets disappear. And I fired one and there you go. So this is 200 pixels. And as soon as they get to that point, they just disappear. So that bullet is completely deleted from the group. So now I can set this back to zero. And that means that when they reach the top of the screen, although it looks like they simply disappear, they actually get deleted from the game completely. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you found this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with the next tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.